Hello, I'm Aknur Karabai, Research Assistant at the Institute of Smart Systems and Artificial Intelligence. In this video, we'll cover Hidden Markov Model, or shortly HMM. Andrei Markov is a Russian mathematician renowned for his works on stochastic models. Markov model is a stochastic process used to model sequential or temporal data that satisfies Markov property. In probability theory and statistics, the term Markov property refers to the memoryless property of a stochastic process. It is assumed that future states depend only on the current state, not on the events that occurred before it. There are four common Markov models used in different situations, depending on whether every sequential state is observable or not, and whether the system is to be adjusted based on observations made. So states are observable in Markov chain and Markov decision process, which are autonomous and controlled respectively, and for the cases where states are partially observable, we have HMM and partially observable Markov decision process. Markov models have a very wide range of applications and use sequential data such as, for example, climate data for weather forecast, financial data for investment analysis, text data for language modeling, speech to text, music data, motion data to track human activity, and many more. To begin with, before covering HMM, we first have to understand the Markov chain, and for simplicity in this video, we'll cover only discrete time Markov chain. As an example, let's consider a weather forecast. Suppose we have two different states, sunny days and rainy days. So we have been given the chronological data for two weeks, sunny, rainy, rainy, four times sunny, rainy, twice sunny, twice rainy, and again twice sunny days. As we have in total eight transitions from sunny, and only five among which from sunny to sunny, the probability that if today is sunny, tomorrow will also be sunny is 0.63. Therefore, the probability that if today is sunny and tomorrow is rainy is 0.37. In the same way, the transition probabilities for the rainy case can be estimated. So from rainy to sunny is 0.6, and from rainy to rainy state is 0.4. So here we can see the two-state HMM with states sunny and rainy, and numbers representing the probability of the Markov chain changing from one state to another state, with the directions indicated by the arrows. One of the important variations of Markov chain is Markov chain with memory, also referred to as Markov chain of order M. If the transition probability to the next state depends only on the current state, we have a first order Markovian. Now, let's have a look on components of Markov chain. First thing is a set of states. Let us denote state as S. So we have S1, S2, S3, all the way up to Sn. And in our example, we had two states, sunny and rainy. Next, we have transition probability. Let's denote it as A. So here, Aij is the probability that if you are now at state Si, the next state will be Sj. And finally, we need initial state distribution to start with. So pi i is the probability to start at state Si, where Q1 is a state at time 1. Now let's first see how to compute initial state distribution. We are given chronological weather information for 14-day period. So in consecutive 14-day period, we had 9 sunny days. So probability of sunny day is 9 over 14, which is 0.64. And rainy days is 5 over 14, which gives us 0.36. The changes of the state of the system are called transitions. Probabilities associated with various state changes are called transition probabilities and represented using a matrix. In our sunny or rainy days example, we have already described how to compute transition probabilities. Now, by putting these values into the matrix, we can construct transition matrix A, and using initial distribution values, we can construct the initial distribution vector pi. Now, using these transitions and initial distribution matrices, we can estimate, for example, the probability of a sequence. We have sunny, rainy, rainy, sunny, sunny day sequence. So probability is as follows. We take initial distribution probability that today is sunny, then multiply by transition probability from sunny to rainy, which is 0.37, 
rainy to rainy 0.4, rainy to sunny 0.6, sunny to sunny 0.63, which gives us overall 0.036. So far, we have covered an example of the Markov model. Now, in hidden Markov model, the states of the model are hidden, but each state emits an output which can be observed and used to describe and learn the model. Let's assume the same weather problem. Suppose now we have selling two types of dessert, ice cream and warm cakes, in an underground metro station, and that's why we cannot figure out the weather conditions outside. So we can't see the states. But now we can observe emissions as number of ice cream and warm cakes being sold. Let's assume that from the past experience we know the number of sold ice cream and warm cakes during sunny days and rainy days. We can use these observations to estimate emission probabilities for different states. Let's denote emission probability B as a probability to observe a specific evidence K at certain state as I. Emission probabilities are found in the same way as transition probabilities. So here we can see the same chronological weather data with a deserved type with largest sold number at each day. In nine sunny days, ice cream have been mostly sold for eight days, so the probability is 0.9. Therefore, the probability of observing cakes being preferred on a sunny day is 0.1. The emission probability of ice cream being preferred on a rainy day is 0.6. And the probability of cakes being mostly sold on a rainy day is 0.4. So now, by putting these values we have estimated, we can construct emission probability matrix. The diagram here represents an HMM with two states, sunny days and rainy days, with emissions as ice cream and warm cakes, and transition and emission probabilities illustrated as arrows. Now, let us try to answer the following question. If on a specific day ice cream was preferred among customers, what is the probability that it was a sunny day or rainy day? To answer this question, we will use Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem is a formulation of conditional probability which evaluates the likelihood of one event A given the other event B. The original conditional probability states as probability of event A given B is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Using Bayes' theorem, we can reformulate conditional probability and get probability of event A given B, such as probability of event B given A multiplied by probability of event A over the probability of event B. Well, we have information that on a specific day ice cream have been preferred among customers, but we don't know what was the weather. Now, using Bayes' theorem and inverting the relations of dependent events, we can estimate the probability of sunny day or rainy day given that ice cream was mostly sold. From initial states distribution, we had probability of sunny day 0.64 and rainy day 0.36. Because we are interested in current state, we don't consider transition probabilities. So here we have our HMM model with emission probabilities illustrated. Probability of a sunny day given ice cream being mostly sold is equal to probability of a sunny day multiplied by probability of the ice cream given sunny day over probability of the ice cream being mostly sold. So we have plug-in numbers and we get 0.73. And the same for the rainy days. Probability of rainy day given ice cream being mostly sold is equal to probability of ice cream being mostly sold given its rainy day multiplied by probability of a rainy day over the probability of the ice cream being mostly sold. Now let's consider that we are given a sequence of the sales preferences and we want to estimate the most likely weather sequence, sequence of hidden states. In this case, we'll use Viterbi algorithm. Viterbi algorithm is a dynamic programming algorithm that provides an efficient way to find the most likely state sequence. Finding the sequence of the hidden states based on the observations is called decoding. Viterbi algorithm is a common way of state sequence decoding used in the HMM. Viterbi algorithm states, given we know transitions and observation probabilities 
matrices A and B respectively, and sequence of the emissions O, compute the most likely sequence of states S. Viterbi algorithm can be written as a recursive problem. So Viterbi pass probability at the current state J is equal to the maximum of Viterbi pass probabilities from the previous steps multiplied by transition probability from state QI to current state QJ and multiplied by likelihood of observation OT given that current state is J. In real life HMM problems, the probabilities of the hidden states are unknown and probability of each observation for a specific state is unknown as well. The forward backward or baum welch algorithm is a special case of expectation maximization algorithm that let us accurately estimate both the transition probabilities A and emission probabilities B based on some initial assumption. We will cover forward backward algorithm in more detail in a separate video. Hidden Markov model has many applications in machine learning such as robot tracking, speech recognition, part of speech tagging, optical character recognitions, and many more.